Hello and welcome back to the Empty Angler. Um, we are indoors today on a wet and miserable day. It's also windy so we're not out on the boat. Obviously the rain doesn't matter with fishing because fish are already wet but when you're a boat angler the wind makes a big difference so we're just going to sit back today and I'm going through some rigs that have got a bit damaged and I'm also making some more up and just just generally having a bit of a refresh. I like to do a reset um, when there's a bit of windy weather uh, and just get everything back up to scratch so when the weather's good we can go straight back into it and it is black bream season at the minute they are in full swing uh, the last couple of videos i've done you know you've seen us catch a lot of black bream and we've done we've done really well on those and i just thought i would take the time today to show you my black bream rig and just go through the step by step and show you what it consists of really like any rigs you know any sort of fish catching things everyone's got their own preference and will say this way works better than the others that's absolutely fine this way works for me and it works a treat and I'm just going to pass it on to you. So if you like it, obviously you can build your own and use it. And if you don't, then that's absolutely fine as well. You know, fishing's a uh, game of many, many ways to skin the cat. So let me just show you it built first already. And then I'll take you through step by step how to make it up from scratch. Essentially though, what it is, is just a little tiny swivel onto some 30 pound rig body. And you've got two hooks on droppers. And then... Uh, You've then got a swivel at the bottom of that uh, and in between that last hook and the swivel you've got a little clip lead um, there running on a swivel and a little bead just to protect it against the knot and that then runs down at the end of that swivel you then have another length of line and another hook on there so essentially it's a two up and one down rig um, or some people call it a Wessex rig that might be something slightly different it depends where you are uh, as to what you're calling things I see things called different things all the time but Essentially, it's a two up, one down rig, um, and it's just deadly for bream. They absolutely love it. Bream can sit quite high up in the water, um, and as you'll see from my last video I done on the ground fishing day, uh, on the on the reef, the bream were coming on the top hooks primarily. But when we was on the soft ground or around the edge of the reef, the bottom hook was picking up the gurnards and the place. So you know it is a it's a really really good all round rig. The hooks on here, I'm using uh, Cox and Rule size two crab hooks uh, but you can use circle hooks as well or some sort of a chinoo variant but the the cox and rule crab hooks there the points to, to be fair like most stuff cox and rule do um the points are absolutely razor sharp and you need that when black bream fishing because they are savage the bites the bites from black bream are savage they are faster than they are quick and when you're striking into them you need something that's gonna gonna hook them on that first strike and i found that these are absolutely perfect for that so essentially just a couple of swivels 30 pound mono i'm using an old 500 meter spool of stuff that i've got in here uh, it's been in the garage it's what i use for my big bodies for most of it uh, for my inshore stuff anyway um and that's it really so yeah like i said a couple of dropper loops uh and i'll take you through now building one from scratch so let's build one from scratch then i'm going to start this off with a clip swivel uh, you can use a swivel at the start of the trace mod the one i just showed you had a swivel on it uh, but sometimes i forget to put a clip swivel on my main line or if i've had a snap off and i'm just tying something quickly together i won't put a clip swivel on my main line um, so for that reason all my rigs primarily have a clip swivel on so no matter whether i've got a clip swivel or a standard ball bearing swivel i can then go straight on with my rig so i'm going to start with a clip swivel and we are going to tie this to our main 30 pound rig body and we are going to use a clinch knot. Uh, a clinch knot, for those that don't know, it's probably the knot that I use 90% of the time for my fishing. It's easy, it's quick to tie, it's the first knot I ever learned from my father, uh, and this is one that I've always used, and it, and it works. So when something works, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Thread your swivel on like that, just fold the line over, and then we're going to do six, six, seven, eight turns around like so. And what that'll do is it'll twist the line up, and it will leave you with a little loop at the bottom, just in there. And you take your tag end, pass it through the eye or the, the loop you just made. And then we're going to pull it tight. And obviously we're going to moisten the line. Uh, and then we're just going to pull it tight and cinch it down. Before you pull anything tight, I know every fisherman should know this, but do wet your line. In the early days when I started boat fishing, I paid lip service to that, which was pulling stuff tight. And the heat generated, you won't notice it because it's such a small, intricate thing. Cut your tag end off. 
Okay. Um, but the friction caused the half week in your line and you will lose fish. So there we go. That's our swivel tighten right down now. If you wanted to improve that, then you could use an improved clinch knot, which is where you basically put it through the bottom loop and then you tuck it back through the top of itself. Um, or you could put another turn around the eye to swivel, that works, but each to their own. That's for what we're doing, bream fishing, you haven't got to go crazy. Then we're gonna go sort of six, six inches below that, six to eight inches. And we're then gonna form a big loop. And we're gonna tie our first dropper. I have got a video on making a dropper rig for conger eels. And what we're doing here is essentially a scaled down version and adding a trace at the bottom. But I'll tag it in, but I'll show you anyway. But form a big loop, just literally by going right over left. And make sure you've got plenty of tag line because the shorter you make that loop, the shorter your trace is gonna be. Um, so give yourself plenty and then you can always make it, um, make it shorter by trimming it up in a minute. Uh, so once you've got your loop, to make the drop up, we're gonna take the line and then we're gonna fold it over itself five or six times on the main body like so. And then what that'll do is it'll start to form a loop in the middle. And like I said, I have got a video on this, but I'll, I'll just show you now. And then once you've done that, you've got your little loop there. It does get fiddly, but I like to put my, put my finger through it just to hold the loop open. And then you're gonna take the tag end of the loop. And then we're gonna pass it through that eye we've just made. Like I said, it does get fiddly, and you know, I've got big chunky hands and fingers. So I'm gonna get that there. And I'm gonna use my teeth just to pull it through initially. And you can see now it's starting to form like a pair of glasses. Just start pulling it tight. And when you get to there, and you've got the main, you can already see it starting to form, but now you need to wet it. Otherwise you get the friction. Put it in your teeth, and then we're gonna pull left and right away from each other, keeping that knot under tension, and that will form our loop. And again, just before you pull it right tight, just give it another little pull, and there is our first dropper loop. Now you can see there's a swivel, sort of probably a man's, a man's six inches there, we'll call it eight. But there's your first dropper loop there. Now, once you've done that, you can either keep the loop like that, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hook. I've got a slightly different hook here, a slightly bigger one just to show you for the demo. But you can either keep the loop like that itself, or you can trim, trim it and open it out to a single strand, if that makes sense. The knot won't come undone, that's, that's perfectly fine there. So you can trim it and have a single uh, tag. But I like to try and keep the knots, um, the loop in it. And the reason being is you can take the loop and then again, it gets a bit fiddly, but you can pass it through the eye of the hook, he says. You can pass it through the eye of the hook over the shank and then you can pull it tight on itself like that. And then that's your hook attached. You know, it will, it will sit right once you get a bit of bait on there and stuff. Don't worry about how it sits like that now because trust me, it doesn't make a difference. They, they take it. But then that's your hook attached there. And then at the end of the day, if you want to fold the rig away or perhaps maybe snag up and the point goes on the hook, all you've got to do is just push the loop off and then your, your hook's gone. So it's really easy. So I like to leave the loops on if I can. So there's our first loop. And then again, another six to eight inches down, we're gonna, just gonna repeat that process. So right over left, big tag end. And then we're just gonna fold the bottom of that loop over the main rig body again. And again, we're gonna go six, seven times over like so, and I'm gonna put my finger in the little loop in the middle again. So you can see it's got twists on the bottom and twists on the top, and the hole where my finger is is where the loop is gonna pass through. So we're gonna take the, the tag end of the loop, and we are gonna tuck it under there, under my chubby fingers. In our teeth, I'm gonna start the initial pull. Wet the knot. Again, before you pull fully tight, wet the knot again, and then pull it tight. And there is your other dropper. Okay, so then again, you can snip it or you can keep the loop, depending on what you want to do, that's entirely up to you. And now what we're gonna do, 
is just hold it up and just get a judge of the rig itself. Hold it up. Like I said, bream can sit quite high in the water. So don't worry about how high up that first loop is. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure again, six to eight inches. And now we're gonna trim it. So we've completely detached that now from the spool of the line. So now you can start to see the rig forming now. So clip swivel, two droppers. Now what we're gonna do is with this tag end is we are gonna thread a little tiny swivel. Now we're bream fishing now, so you can go light with your gear. You know, they're not, they're not mahi or, you know, tuna, you're fishing for bream. Although they do fight, you wanna start scaling your gear down now. So if, you, if like me, you ever bought a pack of swivels and realized you bought the wrong size and they're too small, this is where this comes in handy now. Just thread the swivel on. And then what you're gonna do is, now there's 101 things you can use for this. This is just what I use because I've got big chunky fingers and when you're cold and wet or you know, you're in a bit of a rush, you don't want anything too delicate, is on a standard zip slider, is I just find any damaged ones that I've got or ones that sometimes you get the holes aren't quite big enough for things like your conger eel fishing, depending where you buy them from. Sometimes from China, the holes, the inserts of the slider itself, they're, they're a little bit manky. So I find all the dodgy ones of those and I take off the metal quick link. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna thread that onto our swivel like so, and that then becomes our weight attachment point. So that will go there on the last bit of this rig body. And then you're then gonna put a little tiny loomy bead. Other beads are fine, but I use little loomy beads. Uh, I don't wanna go too big here. I like to keep this quite delicate if I can. So I use a nice small loomy bead, um, just cause the bigger ones, it, you, you can do what you want, but I just, I just keep it small and neat and tidy. So there's your bead. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna put another ball bearing swivel on or barrel swivel. And again, that's just gonna go on with a uh, clinch knot. So six, seven turns and then one for luck. And that's gonna go again under that hole, wet it and pull it tight. And again, we're gonna trim our tag end Right, now what we got, now you could stop there. You could, you could have a little Gemini link or a quick link on the bottom of that and do away with that one and just have a two hook dropper rig for bream and that works really well on its own. Size two hooks, circle hooks, crab hooks, chin hooks, whatever you're gonna use, that alone works really well. But this bottom hook now, which we're gonna attach, will pick you up a lot of fish, especially on softer ground um, or if you're fishing bits of sand between the reef for these bream you'll pick up a lot of extra fish. So all we're gonna do now is take a short 30 centimeter bit of mono, leave it enough for knots and, and, and the rest of it. And then we're gonna tie that to the bottom of that swivel we've just attached, the last swivel. And again, just a, a clinch knot or whatever knot you wanna do. This is a really easy, simple rig here, but you catch so many different fish with it. You know, I use it primarily for a bream rig, but when you're out the back on the deeper water as well, this will catch your weaver, uh, some lovely place, gurnards. It's actually a really good gurnard rig, because um, gurnards tend to be on the bottom. They walk along the bottom gurnard. And so while you're bream fishing, a bit long that one, make it a bit smaller. And um, while you're bream fishing, this actually picks up a lot of gurnard. Now, if you're fishing a bit of reef, what you will find is this bottom hook can sometimes, especially if you're drifting or there's a bit of tide, this bottom hook can snag up. So what I'm gonna do here on this one is I'm gonna attach a couple of little floating beads. So these are little foam beads. Again, you get them off eBay or any tackle shot will do them for cheap. So before I put my last hook on, I'm gonna put a couple of floating beads on and that's gonna be just enough to pop the hook up. Not so far that it's gonna go away from the target species, but just enough to get it off the bottom, hopefully, and away from those little, those little bits of rock. Um, and then we're gonna attach that last and final hook. So again, this is a 2.0 coxswain, wrong, a size two uh, coxswain wall crab hook. And again, this is gonna go on with a clinch knot. And these are razor sharp here because they're small hooks and I'm doing a small, a small rig that keeps catching me, but that's a good sign because if it's hooking me up here, it's gonna hook the fish as well. And again, through the bottom of the hole. 
and now we're going to pull it tight like so cinch it down trim the tag end and that there is our bream rig and it doesn't really come that much easier than that i know i said that about a lot of my rigs really i don't know i do but that's because a lot of my rigs are quite easy to make um so just to recap clip swivel at the start drop a number one where you can attach your hook now you can clip that and make it a single bit of line and then you can trim it up to whatever length you want that's fine or just keep it as it is and then you can loop the hooks on and then you can upgrade your hooks in so if you find you've got a better stamp of bream coming through you know you can then put a slightly bigger hook on or perhaps if they're smaller and you're missing bites you can then scale down just by simply unlooping the, the hook from the you know the, the the trace six to eight inches down below that that's probably more like 12 that one but just for the purpose of this six to eight another loop another hook between that we've got a little swivel and a bead just running where we're going to clip our weight on and a length of line with a couple of floating beads and another hook on there so the idea is the weight will sit down like that you'll have two hooks up in the water for your bream and then this one here will be dangling tantalizingly just above the reef and that's going to pick up your gurnards your place and any bream that are feeding lower down perhaps the females that are in the nests um, and that's it really and that is my bream rig it's caught me a hell of a lot of bream already this year and it will catch me a lot more before the year's out um, and if you like it then give it a go let me know how you do in the comments if you find it works um, and then like i said make sure you choose the most important bit with any rig really is the hook because if you've got the wrong hook on or you're choosing poor quality hooks you simply won't hook up to your fish nice and sharp little circles little crab hooks they work really well when you're bream fishing i tend not to use like long shanks use a nice short shank hook you'll get a lot better hookups and a lot more fish and there is nothing really else to say about my bream rig so i hope you found that useful and easy to follow please do like and subscribe i will be doing some more and i will catch you all in the next video